Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea LS3A. It's on the inheritance of traits. It's really on genetics. And genes are simply made of DNA. And so inheritance is how we pass our genes from one generation on to the next. And so this is a picture of my family. This is my dad, my mom, my two sisters. This is my brother, and this is me. And if you look at me, I look different from my parents, but there are similarities as well. And I owe all of that to my chromosomes. And so sometimes students struggle with what's a chromosome, gene, DNA, nucleus, all of that. So let me lay that out. First of all, we have a cell. And so in a typical organism that's eukaryotic like us, you're going to have a nuclei. And inside the nuclei, you're going to have a number of chromosomes. We have 46 in humans. If you take that chromosome and unravel it, what you'll find is that there are sections of it, and those are called genes, but the whole entire thing is made up of DNA. And so the DNA itself is made up of what are called nucleotides, and these are sometimes referred to as the four letters of DNA. And so again, to go backwards, the nucleotides make up the DNA, a single stretch of that DNA is called a gene, and then all of that is raveled up into a chromosome, and we have lots of chromosomes inside us. And so what do the chromosomes do? Well, number one, they're a blueprint for how to make an organism. So they're the directions on how to make a human. They also, however, are important in inheritance. In other words, the chromosomes are going to be what you pass on to the next generation, and it's what you receive from the generation before you. And so let's get to the blueprint part first. And so how is it the blueprint for an organism? Well, again, a section of DNA is going to be a gene. It's a number of different nucleotides, a number of different letters in a specific order. And so what our cell does is it'll convert that DNA, which sits safely in the nucleus, into something called messenger RNA. And that process is called transcription. So it's really like writing down a recipe and then it's sending out to the rest of the cell. And then the machinery of the cell is going to convert that message or that messenger RNA into a protein. And so when you're looking at a human, when you're looking at me right now, what you're really looking at are proteins or things that are of the result of protein action. And so my skin, my hair, my nails, my muscle, my bone, they're all made up of different proteins. And those proteins come from the DNA itself. And so really, if we go through this order in your cells, DNA makes messenger RNA, that makes proteins, and then the proteins make you. And so your DNA is, is not that amazing. All it is is just a copy of the directions on how to make a new you. Now, as cells copy themselves, they have to make sure that the DNA is copied to each cell. And so the DNA, before a cell divides, is going to replicate, or it's going to copy itself right in half. And what's neat about a double helix is that it can unzip in the middle, and then we can add the complementary letters, and then we have two new strands of DNA, or we've copied the chromosome. After we've done that, the chromosomes will kind of coalesce, and then we divide. And so as the cell divides, it's splitting those chromosomes into the two cells, and then this can occur over and over and over again. And so the DNA in all the cells in your body is identical. And it came from all of the DNA that was in that first fertilized egg. And so how do we get to the inheritance part? Well, you're passing on half of your chromosomes to your offspring. And so in sexual reproduction, that's what humans use, you're getting half of your chromosomes from your mom and half your chromosomes from your dad. And so you're like your parents, you have half of their DNA, but you're also different from your parents. And that's because you're getting a random half of the chromosomes from each of your parents. And so what is a population? A population, be it of lions or ants or chimps or aspen trees, it's all going to be created through inheritance, inheritance of DNA. And all of these lions look very similar, but they also look different and they could owe inheritance to that. So how do you teach this? What's the teaching progression? Well, in the lower elementary grades, you should talk about offspring. So offspring that are created by parents, uh, be it a tree or a hummingbird or you, and you want to emphasize this point, that they're similar. And so if you look at these three birds, they all look like hummingbirds. There are going to be similarities in there, but their offspring is going to be slightly different than the two parents. Just like this small sapling is going to be similar to the tree that created it, or the trees that created it, but it's going to be different as well. And this baby is going to be very similar to mom. In fact, 50% similar, but it's also going to be different. And each generation is getting genes, 
but it's also mixing those genes up and so we get variation within each generation. As you move into the upper elementary grades, you want to talk about how, how we are created. We're created by our parents and so they are giving us each a half a set of their chromosomes and that's making us the way we are. But our environment is also shaping who we are as well. And so it's not only the nature, in other words, the DNA that we get from our parents, but it's the nurture. It's what happens to us during our life that shapes us and gives us the characteristics that we have. And so, for example, the food we get, the nutrients we get, um, the chemicals that we're exposed to are going to change us as an individual. And then the uh, experiences that we have in our life. Learning, for example, is going to change what we will become. And so the DNA tell us a lot about what you're going to become, but they don't tell us the whole picture. In fact, they only tell us about half. As you move into middle school, then we want to start ad identifying these terms. The idea that the cell's nucleus has chromosomes. That chromosome is made up of a number of different genes, and the genes themselves are made up of DNA. And then the building blocks of DNA are going to be nucleotides. You should push this home that humans have 23 pair of chromosomes. And so we have a chromosome 1 that we got from our mom and a chromosome 1 that we got from our dad. And a 2 that we got from our mom and a 2 that we got from our dad. And so each of these chromosomes in humans are going to have thousands of genes on it. And those genes, the gene you get from your mom and the gene you get from your dad, the way they act together is going to determine the way you look. And so, for example, red hair is going to be caused by one gene. And if you have both copies of that red gene, you're going to have red hair. Now, it's not as simple as that. Most traits are actually caused by multiple genes. And so skin color is going to be caused by a number of just different genes that are spread across all of your chromosomes. But that's what we're passing on to the next generation. You also want to talk about mutations, and so if we ever have a change in the DNA, then we have a change in the messenger RNA, and then we can have a change in the protein. And so a couple of simple mutations, red hair is caused by one change in the DNA, and blue eyes as well. And so all people who have red hair and all people who have blue eyes could trace their ancestor to one person who had that one mutation. And in fact, all the diversity of life had to come originally from changes in the DNA or, or mutations. You also want to get more specific on what our parents are passing on to us. And so in a sperm, a male is giving half of all of his chromosomes. So he's giving 23 chromosomes to the offspring. Mom is giving 23 chromosomes in the egg as well. And as those combine together, that creates a new organism. And that organism, if they have kids, is going to pass off half of their chromosomes as well. As you move into high school, you want to start talking about gene expression, and that means how, how we make the proteins that are written in the gene itself. And so remember, a section of that chromosome is called a gene, and we can use the directions in that gene to make a protein. This is a myoglobin protein that's important in blood. But you also want to emphasize this, that every cell in your body has the exact same DNA. And so the cells in my muscle, the cells in my nerve, cells in my skin, cell in my eye, all of those are going to have the exact same DNA. Well, how is that? It's because you don't express all of the genes in all of your cells. And so in my eye, I'm only expressing the eye genes. And in my muscle, I'm only expressing the muscle genes. And so the genes really only make up a small portion of our entire set of DNA. The rest of the DNA are genes that we don't express in that specific cell. And it's also going to be the sections between the genes, which are important in gene regulation uh, and development as well. And so that's inheritance. It's how you get your genes from one generation to the next. It also is the directions on how to make a new you. And I hope that was helpful.